morning, Allentown community. It's Chief Charles Rook of the Allentown Police Department, live here in the uh, podcast studio, along with Detective Luis Garcia. Detective Garcia, can you say hello to everybody as hey, well? Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Chief. Uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in. If you can, please share the live. Uh, this is something that we do uh, quarterly or so, and uh, we want to make sure we update uh, the community. If you are, don't have a chance to come watch the entire podcast today, remember we post it on iHeartRadio, and we also post it on YouTube. So we're, we're excited to be here this morning. Thank you. So it's been a little bit that, you know, we've been on the air, but we want to provide updates and we've been very busy here at APD. Uh, we've had a couple of different things happening in the community. We've been testing um, potential police applicants to come on the department and we're working to make sure that we're fully staffed because that's one of my priorities. As budget season is upon us, I want to give you kind of a, a notification of what we're going to focus on. That's investments in personnel, equipment and training. I got to tell you, our police officers are the backbone of this department, and we want to make sure that the investments we make are making their work atmosphere a good place to work. We want people to become Allentown police officers, especially from the city of Allentown. And if you come back and choose to have a career with us, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for people that want to get engaged, that want to build community, that want to be a change maker and doing the right thing by enforcing the laws and making sure that we're connecting people with the help that they truly do need. And it's something out there that we want to be sure that our community is involved in. Policing isn't just done in a vacuum, folks. We're, we're a piece of the puzzle, I always say. And it's something that piece of puzzle that we work collaboratively together to do that. Um, you know, and I just want to thank the officers for the work that they have been doing over the past several months. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. As we're approaching the end of the year, we are going to have some retirements. for So for those officers who are going to be retiring, I want to wish you the best on your next chapter in life. When you work 20 plus years on the department, it says something. You know, it says that you're committed. It says that you have sacrificed a lot of time, birthdays, holidays, things like that, working and uh, bringing good service to our community. And we wouldn't change it at all. You know, we, we thank you for being part of the Allentown Police Department and it's something that is amazing for us, folks. Uh, one of the things I want to do say, too, is our investigative unit. Thank you guys for all the work that you're doing. Our patrol investigations, our community outreach unit, your youth division. We're all working to make Allentown a safer place. And I'm very excited to see where we're going to go into 2025. 2024 has been a pretty good year. You know, we've been uh, meeting a lot of uh, things that we wanted to accomplish, reduction of crime. Uh, we've been doing enhanced technology from a grant that we were uh, given uh, that allowed us to create and have more technology to better use our, our equipment, such as our Flock Safety LPRs, which has been phenomenal in helping us solve crime. So the people at Flock Safety, thank you for coming over and coming through and providing that uh, equipment to us. Obviously, it wasn't free, but it's something that is a solid investment. That's what it takes, folks. It takes an investment. It takes using the technology and using it to make sure that people are held accountable if they choose to do crime in the city. The other factors that we changed as far as technology-wise is we upgraded our body cameras and in-car cameras. And that's something that's phenomenal because when you're on scene, you want to make sure that you can document as much as possible. And that body camera is doing exactly that. So if we're appearing in a store, talking to people, going to, out into the community, we can capture kind of from that viewpoint what's going on. And in addition, we use that for evidence. We use uh, cameras that are around the area. And also, we have an extensive city camera network. And it's not meant for surveillance against our people, but to hold people accountable if problems and issues do occur. And we want to make sure that some of the priorities going into 25 is I absolutely want to see a reduction in um, traffic issues. You know, people are choosing to speed, they're choosing to run red lights, and that's not acceptable. We need to be able to hold that the folks accountable in doing that. And that, and part of that piece is working with our state legislatures to hopefully grant the municipal police departments um, radar usage. You know, um, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is one of the only states in the nation that do not allow the officers um, here, the municipal officers, to use radar. You heard that right. Our state police uh, brothers and sisters, they're able to use that, but uh, municipal police departments are not. So if you have a moment, reach out to your state legislature and ask them, hey, can we have municipal police departments utilize radar? The purpose of that is not meant to be a money maker. It's meant to bring safety to the forefront because, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I've seen some folks speeding around the city. And when we, sp when we stop them or they're committing violations of that nature, they absolutely do need to be held accountable because no one wants to be involved in a crash. And I would submit to you, even the person that's choosing to break the rules, they don't want to be uh, involved in a crash.
crash. But if they do, you're going to be held accountable. And the state can help us in this by allowing municipal police officers to do that. And again, it's a safety thing. Right now we have some uh, technologies and things that we can utilize for traffic safety, but it, at this point we can do a lot more. And that's where I talk about utilizing and leveraging technology so that we can do a lot more for you. One of the things I want to talk about is crime stats. And you know we're going to have a graphic coming up and we're going to discuss about the reduction in crime that we're seeing. And ladies and gentlemen, there's, not, there's no secret to it. It's about making sure that we have people that are going out there, our police officers, our community members, providing information, leveraging the, the tip 411, being able to do things that, that we can do. And as, I can, as you can see, there's been a reduction of 36.6% uh, in property crime, a 23% reduction in violent crime. There's been um, proactive patrols that have been on the increase. And so far, we have 228 firearms that were seized and recovered. And then we have about 65,442 calls for service year to date. That means that our officers are working. They're out there. They're engaging with our community. They're making sure that folks are safe out there. And don't be afraid to talk to the police officer. It doesn't always have to be just on a call for service level. If you see an officer doing a walking patrol or a business check, say hello. If there's issues that you're thinking about, pass it on. You know, the way that we learn is by talking to each other. The way that we are identified about situations is exactly that as well. Although many of our officers also are social media savvy, we don't get dispatched from Facebook. So it's important that you utilize the non-emergency number or the emergency number to get a hold of us or our police desk at 610-437-7753. And I know what's probably on a lot of minds is um, how how is the city going to be impacted tomorrow with a uh, presidential candidate visit? And it's going to be pretty substantial, the, the impact. We are devoting a lot of resources into this and we're working collaboratively with our local, state, and federal law enforcement partners to ensure the public safety needs are met throughout. We are currently also working on a map plan that we will put out um, through the city website about what streets are impacted. Um, you know, it, it's key that for tomorrow, if you're coming to attend the rally or if you're, um, you know, driving through the area because of work or just traveling through the area, have patience, folks. You know, it's about we have to have some patience for each other and make sure that we're working within the capacity of what's there. And if you don't know, you know, there'll be an officer positioned out there and they'll be able to kind of guide you. But just make sure that you're being patient with each other. We have to be kind of kind to each other, right? That's something that's important, um, talking about being being helpful, especially if you want to get from one spot to another. Um, sometimes you're in a rush. Just take time tomorrow. Uh, give yourself extra time if you're trying to go somewhere, especially if you're traveling through the center city area around the, uh, the PPL arena. Um, it's important that you have patience. And just watch the, the uh, map that we're going to be putting out that is going to kind of inform you of what streets are going to be shut down. And we're going to have a visible presence of police officers all throughout the, uh, the city. And I want to say thank you to the, uh, the various law enforcement organizations uh, and agencies that are involved in this as we are going through the planning stages and the implementation of this plan to ensure safety for everyone. Um, you know, Allentown is a very welcoming city, and we want to say that we are also some someone that um, cares for our neighbors, somebody that will be accepting of a lot of different people, and we want to make sure that that is, is, is uh, shown tomorrow. And that's from the work of all our officers. And I want to thank my administration team, from uh, Chief Becker, uh, Chief Gress, uh, Captain Conjure, Captain Beal, Captain Gross, Captain Pammer, uh, Captain Anderson, everybody that's involved in making sure that we have a safe environment for our um, visitors tomorrow and also for our um, public that's going to be out there and, and all that. One of the things, too, that we want to mention is that <clears throat> we're not looking to impact the time that you go to vote. So if you're coming to vote to the Lehigh County Government Center, um, there should be pathways open to you there that you're able to go in and out at your at your pleasure to go to the election office and do the vote. Um, as a police department, we do have to stay neutral when it comes to politics, so we're not endorsing any one candidate or the other. We just want to make sure that public safety needs are met, and we want to make sure that everyone is safe. And if you are going to vote, you have the opportunity to do so without any hindrance, and freedom of movement is a, a very important thing that we're going to be making sure happens um, during that time. So as far as the, the crime stats and everything, I want to, again, give that thanks to our officers, both on in patrol, investigations, our community outreach unit, and everybody that's involved in that thing, because it's, it's, it's vital that we're doing that. We did a couple media releases out there over the course of September. 
um, where officers were able to bring resolutions to many different cases, some involving um, one in particular, a vintage stolen vehicle that was recovered, that was highlighted through social media, and it, and it, and it came out that um, you know, it was swiftly returned and located after that, so that's a good thing. Um, there's been different cases that we've also assisted in. Um, you know, I want to give uh, credit, um, obviously, when we had the, uh, um, the Dominican Parade and Festival here in Allentown, there was uh, shots fired, uh, shooting incident that happened, and our officers ran directly into that, uh, that uh, incident without hesitation. Um, I showed up on scene that day, and I saw the marvelous work that was done by our men and women of the department, not only to hold people accountable, but to render aid to folks that may have been injured and struck. And I also want to give credit to our Allentown paramedics and our public safety teams for being out there and addressing those situations with uh, professionalism, because that's what it's about, folks. You know, we don't want to see bad incidents happen, but when they do, our officers are going to be there and they're going to face it. And I want to thank uh, Lehigh County District Attorney uh, Gavin Hollihan for, um, you know, prosecuting this case and being able to uh, show to the public exactly what went on at that point. Um, you know, it's about safety, folks. We are a welcoming, diverse city, and we want to be sure that when incidents happen here that we are all on the same page. We're going to give information that's going to be important for you to consider to make sure that you're safe, to make sure that we have a, a situation where we're going to be um, doing the things that, that we need to do. Um, but it, a lot of it requires of the uh, information that we're getting from um, our citizens out there or witnesses. And don't be afraid to come forward with information because what the person that's choosing to do crime is relying on is for our people to be scared, for people to, to be concerned about retaliation. But you don't just have to talk to an officer. You can also submit it anonymously through our tip form one. As we move forward in our community engagement piece, in September we had a really great time, um, you know, doing some traffic details. Uh, we had a new speed monitor device that we put out there, and I think we're going to have uh, some pics that we're going to put up for a deployment of that. And I'll tell you what, you know, it, it's important that we get these messages out. It doesn't necessarily have to be just for uh, speed, but it also is if there's some type of work that's happening that will that will go there. And this is something that we want to be able to make sure that that we're doing. Um, so if you're traveling, you see those speed signs. They're going to be at th placed throughout the entire city um, at different times and venues. So if it's not in your neighborhood right now, it more than likely will be. So stay, you know, keep an eye out for that. Stay tuned. Watch that. And also, if you're experiencing um, speeding issues, things of that nature, traffic violations, please reach out to us at the police department here. You can definitely reach out to our community outreach unit. Or you can reach out to our traffic unit and we'll be able to take those complaints and follow up on those and to make sure. Also in September, we uh, celebrated National Police Women's Day. And I got to tell you, uh, thank you to the, uh, the female officers within our department. An outstanding job done every day. Um, and we can't thank you enough. And for those that are um, currently in other occupations, other fields, and you're deciding to become a police officer, don't let that stop you. Like, you know, we're, we're, again, a diverse police department. We want people from all backgrounds, because that's how we kind of grow, right? Uh, people have their lived experience, and they're able to go out and provide it and build community. And as a police officers, we are absolutely part of this community. And it's key that we want to, um, you know, in, expand our number of police officers that we have here. Um, speaking of that, we have several uh, cadets in our police academy right now. They're due to uh, graduate in December, and I can't wait to see them start their field training when they're going to go out and actually learn how it is to be an Allentown police officer. And there's a couple of things that I'm not ready yet to reveal, but we're going to be moving forward in 25. Um, you know, as it comes down to the budget time, we don't anticipate a tax increase, but we're going to bring additional levels of service to the city of Allentown. And we're always going to do the mission of working hard and making sure that we earn that badge today. I want to tell you one of the things that I said as a supervisor, road supervisor, or a commander, lieutenant, um, I would come into the muster um, inspe pre-inspection meetings and I'd talk to the officers. And I'd share a little tidbit of information. I'd say, what, what's always in my mind is I point to my badge and I say, what did I, what did I do to earn my badge today? Because this is a field like no other. Um, no two days are the same. And it's something that is impactful where you as a, as a police officer can make that change. So if you are considering uh, becoming a police officer, Please take those steps. You never, you don't know until you take those. Um, and I want to share with you uh, and thank our background unit for conducting multiple, multiple uh, background investigations on potential candidates. But it is a challenge to find 
a, uh, a quality candidate. And what some of the, the main challenge in that um, is finding candidates that, um, you know, are, are, are truly, truly engaged in wanting to be a police officer. This is not just a job. It's something that becomes kind of like a, a career and a lifestyle. <clears throat> the thing with that, um, if you consider the ratio of, of being an applicant to a hire, it's about one in 10 are successful. So if we have 100 people that take the test or 300 people, you know, from 100, you only really have 10 uh, potential candidates that could possibly be officers um, on the Allentown Police Department. That kind of repeats itself throughout the Lehigh Valley and throughout the state, actually. Um, so if you're if you're looking to become a police officer, don't get discouraged. If you did if you made a bad choice in your in your in your past, if it's not something that's disqualifying, if it's not something that um, will li- will prevent you from becoming a police officer, I recommend being a hundred percent honest from the jump, and that way we can kind of work with you and go forward. Um, we we don't expect robots. We don't expect that. Like I I truly love the the applicant that comes in and has a squeaky clean background with no issues. That's awesome. Like, I love that. Um, and, and we've had many officers that are doing that, and I, and I absolutely will put that forward, and that kind of, in my book, gets that little plus mark that, you know, when you're considering a candidate. Uh, and then within our civil service rules, you know, we have certain disqualifications that are posted and also qualifications. So be informed. Uh, the best way to do that is to go to our joinallentownpd.com. We're not currently actively hiring right now but keep an eye out on the on the website because it's key for us to do that and just bringing it back to national police women's day um you know we've had many many female police officers that are doing an outstanding job throughout all levels of this department from new patrol officer all the way up to the administration and every day we thank them on also in september it was national thank a police officer day which i believe we have a pick on that too and the thanks can't be said enough. I mean, it goes without saying, um, you know, we want to we want to appreciate all the officers in the Allentown Police Department and throughout the Lehigh Valley, throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for the work that you're doing, both on the on the streets and then back home. Many of our officers have a work life balance, and it's important to also consider those home things. You know, there's many times where officers can't make it to. Uh, a birthday or a kid's baseball game or that type of thing because they're out protecting the community and they're doing what they need to do for their career. And being a police officer also is very fulfilling. Um, you know, I was I was able to participate in the uh, uh, City of Allentown Halloween Parade today, handing out some candy uh, to children. You see the smile on their faces, especially those who were uh, wearing the uh, a uniform for a police officer and it was great to see that and each of them wanted to be a police officer when they grew up so it's starting from young and moving forward and i'll say this anybody that has a plan to to be something more be a police officer a lawyer a doctor uh, something that will contribute to the fabric of our society i commend you keep up with it don't let any obstacles stop you keep overcoming them have that resiliency from within and you can achieve what you're going to achieve um there's, there's a lot of things that are going on. We have a comment here from Jennifer Davis, 12th and West, uh, Washington Street. I believe we're talking about the speed board. Absolutely. There's a couple of streets that I'm seeing where, you know, you kind of just scratch your head and you're like, what the heck? Um, but it's not going to just stop with the scratching of the head and, and saying the what the heck. It's going to be about taking that action. And together, we're going to identify these areas. We're going to put enforcement there and we're going to be taking I'm happy to report that our traffic uh, team has been out there. They have been um, conducting enforcement operations and people have been getting citations or otherwise. But I will repeat what I said in the beginning. Go to your state legislature and ask that they support legislation to allow police officers to utilize um, radar uh, for in traffic enforcement purposes because that's going to be huge when it comes to slowing things down. The other option that, or the other uh, legislation that I would like to see pursued is to have automatic red light cameras at problem intersections in the city. Um, I can't tell you how many times when I was a patrol officer that a car went through a red light and created a crash, or in recently where we're hitting different areas of the uh, community where we're hearing problems or seeing that people are saying, hey, this this car runs through the red light, and we want to reduce that. With having an automatic red light camera, they can be issued citations. It'll capture them on the camera, and there's really nothing that can be um, argued against in that in that fashion. But one of the things we have to meet is a population standard. If we look at ourselves as a, as a regional area, it's something that I think can be powerful in conjunction with the enforcement steps that we're taking right now. So 
thank you, Jennifer. And we're going to continue to, to move forward in that, in that pursuit. Uh, I want to thank on in September. Also I want to thank Nikos Elias for their annual first responder luncheon. Um, Nikos and Jenny do a phenomenal job to provide um, a thanks, a note of thanks for our officers, public safety department, uh, fire department, EMS, and everybody else that's, that's a, uh, a servant of the community. So they had some good food there. Um, you know, we always, we always connect on that time. Uh, we get to say hello to Nikos and his family. Mm -hmm. You see the fire trucks up there, you know, and, and it's something that that's great because it's about community folks. It's about, you know, we're here to do things together and we want to be sure that, you know, we're all on the same page. And it's something that like, I, <clears throat> I want to say that it's not just about having those type of things, but just in those informal contacts when our officers are taking those walking patrols or business checks Stop and talk to them. Many times the officers work their same area, so they get to know exactly what's happening, and that's the key piece. Um, you know, we want to say thank you to Nico Elias again in that in that respect. We had the trick or treat this past Friday on um, you know on, on October the twenty fifth, and we want to say thank you for everybody that came out. We put out some messaging on our Facebook of of what to follow, walking groups, you know, where where something reflected, where some um, possible lights on you if you can. Um, and we'll go through. So that was always a great experience. And I was uh, very grateful to participate in a trunk retreat on the south side. Um, Detective Garcia, I think we, we saw the, uh, the evolution of Bat Cop. Um, what, do you, what do you think? Yeah, so we, uh, so we shared some of those pictures on our Facebook, if you're interested. Also, the Allentown Police Athletic League uh, with their kids were there. I mean, it was a big event. Uh, yeah, there were some, you know, the traffic got backed up a little bit because everybody wanted to get there and they wanted to have a safe spot for them, for their kids to go trunk or treat. But yeah, of course, I bring it back every year, Bat Cop. Uh, everybody uh, was excited to see uh, the Batman costume face. <laughs> so it's easy for me just to wear the police uniform and, and put on the, the Bat, you know, the Batman face. So really fun event, fun time. Like I said, thank you, Luis Acevedo. Thank you, McDonald's, all the organizations. It was a great time. It was absolutely amazing. I mean, you just saw the different variety and uh, costumes, and it was just a good time had by all. Um, I think, you know, uh, I just want to give credit to Sergeant Leonard. He worked very hard on a craft to make the uh, the Tomator truck, and um, it was it was great to see. So, um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a very talented individual, but I do believe the strength behind that is his wife. So thank you, Mrs. Leonard, for the work that you put into that, and especially the PAL kids, you know, um, young people that are our leaders of tomorrow. I very much support the PAL program, and I think it's something that we find value in. When I went through the PAL program, it wasn't as extensive as it was here, but it was still that opportunity to connect with police officers and understand how uh, law enforcement operates, you know. But in this instance, when we have our mentor program through the PAL uh, program, it creates leaders. Um, you have you have motivated officers. Like I, like one of the kids uh, came up and shook my hand and said, hey, Chief, how are you? Good to see you. And, he, and I saw him shake Sergeant Leonard's hand. So it's about those manners, those values that are put in there that it's just, it just sets people apart and it puts it in a right place because we're, we're social creatures by habit, humans, right? And knowing that you can connect on a personable level with someone, that's, that's amazing. That's a first step in making sure that even if you have differences and you disagree about many different things, you can always come to the table and, and meet and talk, right? And that's something that's happening. Um, and Halloween, obviously, um, trick-or-treat was Friday, but Halloween is on the 31st of October, which is coming up very quickly. So, you know, uh, happy Halloween to everybody out there. I know there's been a couple parades out there throughout different communities. And what makes it pretty cool is that the kids have a fun time. There's some candy to be had. And for those parents that do enjoy some of the, uh, the candy, you can also utilize a dad or mom tax on that candy, get a few pieces for yourself. But remember, everything in moderation, um, and that'll be a positive thing. Lights in the Parkway is uh, November 29th, um, Friday, November 29th through Saturday, January 6th of 2025. Can't believe we're going to be in 2025 already. This year has flew by. But, you know, we want to make sure that um, if you do go, enjoy the lights. It's kind of like the tradition in Allentown. You get to see it, go through with the family, listening to some good uh, Christmas music, and just um, enjoying that time. We have an upcoming uh, Safety, Health, and Wellness Day for the city. That's going to be at the Agriplex uh, from 9 to 3. Thank you for everyone for, for doing that. From our human resources team to our risk management team, we appreciate you and the work that you put into the city and making sure that our employees' needs are met. Uh, community meetings, I want to be very clear that we don't do this job alone. We rely on 
hundreds and hundreds of people to help us to provide support as far as information and otherwise. And we have a lot of community community meetings scheduled out there. Um, and through the month of October, you can see the various ones from West Park to Franklin Park to Muhlenberg Community Group um, to the Downtown Business Association. If you want to know what's happening in your neighborhood, more than likely there's a community group within your area. And you don't have to go all the time, every time, but reach out to some of those groups and get that information so that you can be included in the email. Uh, we provide crime stat updates to folks. We provide information of what events we're looking for. We provide information for potential job opportunities in the city, um, different things of that nature. So, you know, it's something that we very much want to see our, our community engaged in. So if you're out there, if you can't, if you can't make it, that's okay. But you can um, get that information later by having and knowing exactly who to contact. Um, we, well, we also want to talk about um, dirt bikes and any suspicious activity. From a crime prevention perspective, we want to make sure that you're clear on how to get in, in touch with us and all that. And Detective Garcia, I'm going to ask if you can kind of give kind of a rundown on that process. Sure, absolutely. So, you know, obviously if it's something that's completely unsafe and, um, you know, something happening at the moment, you know, obviously dial 911. Those are emergency calls. We need you to call us 911, especially if it's happening actively. Or if it's a non-emergency where you see folks are, are going to a certain area all the time, or there is a house where maybe you have some information that you want to provide anonymously, or uh, you want to provide to us, uh, and you know that they're congregating, especially with dirt bikes or illegal activity, by all means, we have a non-emergency number. We have a tip 411 number. I mean, we are not hard to find, as you know, and we want to help the community. And, and with that information that you give us, we'll help uh, make a safer community. You know, also, we're, as far as, you know, we're going down into the crime prevention aspect of it, if we can prevent something from happening, if we can prevent someone from maybe, uh, you know, going down a street illegally on a dirt bike and, and you know, uh, creating a crash and hurting a child or, or another person in the community, that's something that we want to prevent. So um, there's also some other stuff, Chief, as far as prevention goes. Uh, we're seeing phone scams. Obviously, the, the holidays are coming. Um, please, you know, pay attention to those phone calls. And, uh, you know, all the things that we're talking about as far as crime prevention goes. So when, when you're out there, make sure you're locking your cars. Make sure you're taking stuff that are, that's out of you, out of your cars. You know, all the stuff that we share, the 9 p.m. routine, all that stuff is very important. People might take it for granted, but it's something that we can do. And as you can see, with the hard work of the police officers, our detectives, our, 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 our entire police department, and the community, our crime stats are down. So that is, the, that is due to the hard work and the prevention of all of you and, and obviously the hard work of the police department as well. So please, please, please just send us a message, communicate with us, and we can make this stuff happen. Thank you, Detective, Detective Garcia. It's absolutely vital that that communication takes place. And just very simple, my quote that I always say, if you see something, say something. And that's just the, the bottom line. Like if, if you have something going on and you, it kind of gives your, your stomach that feeling of, hey, that's not right, you may want to let us know about it. If it's not calling us directly to let us know, send an email, uh, put it through the tip for one, 411 like we talked about, and make sure that, you know, um, you include as much information as possible because that's helpful. If we're if we have a starting point, um, you know that that really really speeds us up. But I just want to recap, um, you know, that we're going to be coordinating that nightly reminder for that 9 p.m. initiative. You know, it, that's key. Like, if you lock your car doors, lock your windows, and all that, and if you see some suspicious activity, it's key to report that. I also want to recap that tomorrow we're going to have a uh, presidential candidate visit. So it is going to impact the downtown area around the PPL uh, center, PPL arena. And that's something that uh, we'll be putting some more information out uh, shortly. It's going to be on the city website and, and all that. And it's going to have kind of outlined what, what roads are going to be impacted and that type of type of thing. But again, I do want to remind our community, please have some patience tomorrow. Um, you know, some people might get upset. Some people might say, Oh, that's too crowded. But understand that we're going to we want people to come through. We're a welcoming city. We want to make sure that folks are safe and are complying with the rules and ordinances of the city of Allentown and the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the United States. So with that, folks, you know, we're on social media, Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, all the different uh, threads out there. Follow us. Uh, we're going to provide you with the information that we can provide and know that we're in a partnership, folks. I look forward to 2025. Uh, as we're approaching towards the end of the year in 2024, we have several holidays coming up. 
uh, many different beliefs out there. But one thing that is consistent is that we all want to have a good life. We all want to have good public safety. We all want to make, uh, we want a clean, safe, healthy environment out here. And that's a lot. The answer is not just one person. It's all of us coming together. Remember that puzzle piece. We're all one piece of that puzzle that when we come together, nothing can stop us. And we're going to do that for, for all our community, everyone out there. And with that, I want to wish you a blessed day. Have a great one. Take care. Thank you.